ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Edward. Edward, and tonight we are going to show you miracles that we hope you've never seen anywhere in the world before. And I think I can guarantee that by the end of this act, you will have witnessed something in the realm of the paranormal and the extraordinary. And along those lines, I would like to introduce my lovely assistant for the evening, the fabulous Rena. We also have another special guest that we have worked with for many years in order to bring him here to the Magic Castle. This is his first week here, so I, I want you to bear in mind, as I was saying, he has trained for many years in the mystic arts, and he does a few tricks of his own, so I'd like to bring him out. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Jim, Emperor of All Dogs. taken when he was a very small pup from a large litter of border collies. They come from Scotland where all the animals have what is known as second sight, or the ability to actually look into the future. Have you heard of psychic animals before? Hmm? I know you're looking at me like I'm a two-headed calf standing up in front of you. Psychic animals, you may have heard of animals crossing great land masses to find their masters without any scent or clue to guide them. or cats saving people from burning buildings. Have you heard of this? You're not reading the National Enquirer like I would have expected. Another thing you may have heard of is that cats can predict natural disasters. Have you heard of this? Yes. Good, thank you. I appreciate that. They can predict natural disasters. As a matter of fact, during the last earthquake we had here in Los Angeles, Jim not only ran around the yard in a circle barking for 10 minutes before the earthquake hit, but he actually changed the batteries in the flashlight and shut the gas off. He is unbelievable. What is going on? Excuse me a moment. It's a wonderful time of the evening. But... The lovely and overpaid Rita. Yeah. hard to get good help in this town. We have a pack of cards. We're going to try a little experiment using the minds of the audience here. So I hope some of you still have that with you. Otherwise, it's pretty boring. The 1115 show. We will try an experiment now. What we did before the show, backstage, we put some cards on the floor. And what Jim does is he goes into a deep somnambulant trance, which takes a lot out of him physically, but it's for your entertainment. He stepped on one card with one paw. We took that card, sealed it in an envelope, we've been keeping it backstage, we brought it out for the 11.15 show, it's waiting for you. Jim, the envelope, please. Come on. Good job, Jim. Good job. It is hard to get good health in this town. 
This is the slobber-proof outer lining that we use exclusively here in Hollywood. I'd like you to note that inside the slobber-proof liner is the prediction for this show. Please note, not only is the prediction inside, it is sealed and it has Jim's paw of approval stamped on the flap so that you can make sure at all times no one gets near it or tampers with it in any way. I'm going to place it into the high-tech plastic stand thusly. Thank you. And the later the crowd, the easier it is to get applause. Now we have a, uh, a pack of cards. I'm going to try and experiment. Let me show you the cards. I wouldn't lie to you first off. This is not a normal pack of playing cards, in case you didn't notice. But if you were the brawny paper towel guy, these would be normal to you. Big hands. They're also, thank you sir, they're also unusual for another reason. This is what happens when you ask someone to cut the cards and they take you, literally. These have been cut diagonally for testing the powers of ESP, or ESP. Let me show you what they look like. Very important that you note, all the cards are different. The only cards that are the same are, yes, you probably guessed it psychically by now, the halves that are on the other side. And I will show you these. So we're going to work with some minds. I'd like to have, is there possibly a married couple in the front row here? You're holding hands. What are the chances, sir? Probably not married, am I right? Are you married? Good. Uh, now, you obviously sat in the front row. Uh, I'd like to ask the lady, have you ever done any psychic work before? Good, then this will work. Let me ask you a question. We did not plan anything tonight. I, you have no idea who I am or what I'm doing, correct? Perfect. Let's try a little experiment. Don't give me a hint. Don't say a word. Your name is... Carol, am I right? No. Wrong. Oh, what is your name? <laughs> Terry Carol. Close enough. It's 11.30. Uh, do you have a, a sister named Carol or a mother-in-law? Did you sing any carols for Christmas? <laughs> Thanks for working with me on this. You've been incredible. Well, she's obviously a non-believer. We will try and convert her. What I want you to do is hold two hands up, right? Like in front of your face here so that we can just choose one. Which one would you use, your right or your left? Your right. This is okay, but they say that the psychic hand is traditionally the left hand because it's closer to the heart. Did you know this? I read it in a Shirley MacLaine book, so you pretty much know it's gotta be true. <laughs> but we will go with your choice. I'm going to run these by, and as they go by, what I want you to do, let me ask you another question. Have you ever had in your life a psychic flash before? No. She was look, thinking about that for a moment. We're not building the shuttle. It's just a simple question here. Never had a psychic flash? You know, you're walking down the street and something like that happens? Nothing like that ever happened? Well, we'll see what happens because maybe now, maybe tonight is the right time. I'm going to go through these and you're going to lunge forward and drop your finger on one card. Is that all right with you? How about you, sir? Good. All right. So anyone you want, as they go by, but let it be a psychic vision. Here we go. The lunge, and there it is. Now, again, I'm going to cut the cards where she put her finger. Are you happy with this one? She's very happy. Give her a round of applause, folks. All right. I'm going to place this into the high tech plastic stand. Now, I'm going to ask you, sir, have you been married for a few years? Six. Six. That's enough. Good. Now, she made a random choice. Sir, I don't want you to make just a random choice of any card. What I want you to do is try and drop your finger on the card that you think she would want you to choose. And you're married to her, so you know what I'm talking about, am I right? So here we go. By the way, which hand are you going to use, sir? Thanks for working with me. That's okay. Here we go. That one right there. Now, again, I'm going to cut the cards. Are you happy, sir, with this yeah. one? You don't want to change it. All right, we're going to place it again into the high-tech plastic stand. And now the moment of truth. I'm going to unseal the prediction. I think you'll be incredibly impressed and amazed at Jim's psychic talents. As I unseal the envelope, you will note to your amazement that the cards match up perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> Want. He's only a dog, okay? <laughs> yes, Jim the dog with the ability to cloud men's minds, but only for brief moments, apparently, with this group. Let's see how well the, the married couple did. Let's see how really well you know each other after six years. If I was to turn around one half of this card and that turned out to be the ten of diamonds, you'd say, big deal. Big deal. Good.
Good timing, I like that. The real coincidence, the real freak of nature would be if we turned around the other half and it was the other half of the Ten of Diamonds. That would be... That would be a mistake. Guess you guys didn't know each other quite as well as you thought, am I right? How embarrassing for them, folks. I feel terrible. I don't know how to make it any better for you. You've, you've made it. They're not even close. It's, it's, well, I guess we've come this far. It makes it even harder for the, do the dog this way. I want you to know that. But Yeah, well, let's see what happens. We need a little energy boost for this 11.30 show, 11.15. I'd like to have a drum roll, please. <laughs> folks! Match. What are the odds? I can barely believe it myself. You know, it must be the luckiest night of Jim's entire life. I'm glad that you were here to share this with him. But now, we are going to attempt something never before attempted here at the Magic Castle. We are going to attempt to nullify the laws of gravity, an art practiced by the holy men of Tibet who are credited with being able to actually project their bodies through space. An ancient rite known to the priest of Chaldea and a closely guarded secret in the temples of Babylon for countless centuries. And so, with these invisible forces and a powerful magic spell, we bring you a levitation. Jim, the Emperor of all the 